Hello newbies, welcome to this tutorial on ratting in your first Vexor Navy issue. Um, first let's take a look at this ship. Uh, this is a fairly standard VNI and the main component to a VNI is the tank. It needs to be strong enough to uh, take all the damage that the rats will do to you. And Grister rats that are found in Declan do mainly kinetic damage and a little bit of thermal. So the main thing with this fit is to get these two shield resists very high. And we have here a couple of large shield extenders. These just give a nice 8000 buffer for shield that we can play around with. Here is a kinetic deflection field. When this is enabled the kinetic resist will go much higher. Then we have a thermal uh, shield resistance rig. This is what makes it 48%, otherwise it's even lower. And two shield recharge rigs. Uh, these, together with these two shield power relays, make the shield recharge pretty fast and should be enough to make sure that uh, it doesn't matter how many rats damage you, you will still uh, charge your shield back up faster. Now, it's worth noting that uh, there are four drone damage amplifiers here. The purpose of these is simply to make your drones hit harder. As you can see I have 645 damage. I'm not exactly sure how accurate this is, but it's around 600. And finally in the high slots I have a drone link augmenter. This is not strictly needed, just extends your drone control range, so it's a bit useful. And also very importantly, the afterburner is actually a tank mod. It's not there to get you around faster. In EVE, when you go faster, you take less damage. And this afterburner cuts many of the damage types yet that you take in half. So it's very useful. There are some bad VNI fits uh, that are used which do not have an afterburner. Uh, don't use those fits. They take much more damage and are harder to use. So let's take a look at my um, cargo bay. I have four mobile tractor units here. That's all I carry in my VNI. I will show you later what they do and how to use them. As for drones, I use Kaldari Navy Wasps. Uh, you will generally want to skill into Wasp 2s because they do a little bit more damage and are cheaper, but I am bad. I don't have the skill trained, though it's training here. You see, four days left. Uh, but for now the navy wasps do the same damage, they live even longer, they are just more expensive and and, and uh, yeah, well the damage is a little bit lower. These warriors are here just to fill the dro drone bay up with some smaller drones. Uh, I don't really use them for anything. The v VNI will die fast to any players. It's, the tank is all aimed at tanking Guristas, so this will die fast to any players, so it doesn't matter if you have any drones to ward off players, you will die to other players. So the first thing when you take your VNI and want to go ratting with it, is to join a defense fleet. I am in JU, and if you're in JU or anywhere near it, you will want to join the JU standing fleet. And now it's safe to undock. I will be ratting in a Forsaken Hub. This is one of the easiest anomalies to rat in and also the most profitable one. Let's take a look at the probe scanner. Okay, there are only three of them. They might be taken. Let's just check each one out. Now, as soon as you undock, you just want to turn on this kinetic deflection field and just keep it on forever. The range indicator is a bit useful for positioning yourself in the anomalies. You may want to keep it on. And of course there's someone already here. Okay, right click, ignore, and let's try the next one. JU is a popular system, so there are often people here. Uh, 
All right, nobody here. So when you land in a forsaken hub, whoops, I turned the, that spam off. When you land in a forsaken hub, what you want to do is you want to click on this furthest asteroid, hit approach, turn on your afterburner, and then drag your wasps into space to launch them. Turn on the brackets, you see they're following me. Now just sit back and wait for a bit. You see the enemies start aggressing me. They're hitting my ship. Uh, that's what the red box signifies. This is what you want to see. You always want to take all the damage. You don't want them to shoot your drones because your drones will die. Sometimes the game bugs out and they will sh start shooting the drones. In that case, try to either relaunch the drones or just take another anomaly. Now when you're about middle, open your cargo bay and launch the mobile tractor unit. The purpose of this is twofold. Um, first, it gives you something to orbit. I'm going to orbit it at 30 kilometers. If you have a bad drone range, you may also want to use 20. Now, since this site doesn't have anything in the center normally, uh, you would otherwise have to orbit these asteroids, and there's the danger of getting out of drone range because your orbit takes you away from the center too far. That's why I always drop the MTU in the middle there. What the MTU itself does, it simply drags all the wrecks to it and loots them. So uh, you can later just pick up the MTU and grab all the loot in one piece. You don't have to go around clearing each wreck individually. As you can see, it's pulling that wreck. This is an empty wreck, so no loot in there, but well, it still pulls everything to itself. As you can see, I'm taking a bit of damage from these rats, but my shield recharge is quite fast, so it's not really affecting me very much at all. This is the point of these ratting ships. They are very strong against the rats. So you just sit here, take damage while your drones kill the enemy ships. What you will always want to do is to have your drones set to aggressive and focus fire. This way they concentrate on one target and kill them in the fastest way. Most of these rats are fairly harmless to you. They don't do significant damage even to a Vexor Navy issue and you can pretty much ignore them. But there are some that are a bit more of a threat, especially if you have poor uh, skill, train, uh, poor skills trained. I will point them out later if they spawn. Meanwhile, an important part of all ratting fits is the capacitor. When you start out, your skills will be pretty bad, and your fit may not be cap stable. As you can see, I am stable at 11%. This is okay, but if you start out, you may not be stable. It may say some minutes here instead of the word stable. That is bad, because if you run out of capacitor while doing uh, an anomaly, then your tank will turn off, and you will start taking quite a lot of damage and might even die. So what to do? is to train the appropriate skills. For capacitor, there are four main skills you want. Capacitor management and capacitor systems operation are two of them. These both increase the recharge rate of the capacitor. Uh, the capacitor management skill says it increases the capacity of the capacitor, but this also gives you more recharge because the recharge is always a percentage of the full amount. The other two skills are under navigation. First is afterburner. Get this to level 4. This will make the afterburner use much less capacitor. And then you have fuel conservation, which is basically the same thing. These two together will drastically reduce the capacitor's uh, energy, um, capacity u capacitor use, and should result in your ship being cap stable. 
to demonstrate why this afterburner is necessary, I'm just going to turn it off. Look at the damage counts that I'm taking. You see them, they already jumped up quite a bit higher. This is because now I'm going slower, I'm taking more damage, you see. 50s listed, 30s, whereas before you saw 20s and uh, even under 20 damage amounts. So this takes a good deal of damage off me. You can even see my shield starting to go down. If you take a lot of damage, you should warp off at around 25% shield. As the shield gets lower, as it nears 30%, it actually starts to recharge also faster. So don't be scared if it goes to like half damage, that's fine. The recharge is very strong near 30%, so you probably don't have anything to worry about even if it goes half uh, empty. I have fairly good uh, shield skills, so right now even without my afterburn I'm not taking much damage. I will turn it off again when some of the dangerous rats spawn and maybe then we can see how it uh, is in the difficult cases. But this here is nothing, just sit back and relax. I can go and make a cup of tea and be completely AFK if I want to be not careful. One thing you always want to do when ratting is you want to look at the Intel channel. You always want to see what's going on. Are there enemies coming near you? If you don't know what a system is, they're always linked very nicely. So yeah, you can just click on them and this shows the route. 12 jumps away, I absolutely don't care about this. So nothing for me to worry about. The other one, also 12 jumps also nothing to worry about. Now let's just wait until something interesting happens. There we go, a new wave spawned. And here you see Diarpism modifier. These are the dangerous ships. Look at the damage output. There you go, 131. Much higher than any of the others. This is because the modifiers do thermal damage, which is the weaker of the two relevant resists. The VNI is especially vulnerable to these, so you will probably want to kill these manually uh, if they spawn. If you have good shield skills, it doesn't matter, but if you're just starting out, just target them manually and hit F to tell your drones to kill them at the beginning of the wave, so they don't get the chance to keep applying damage. By default, the wasps will always go after the big ships. You can see here, size 700 meters. Uh, but the dangerous ones are actually the smaller ones, 300 meters and also some frigates, if they should spawn which I will point them out to you. There you go, modifier down, now it's no big deal. Okay, a new wave spawned here. This one also has some frigates. The 100 meter ones are frigates, 300 are cruisers and 700 are battleships or whatever. These are not too dangerous frigates. I don't remember if this infiltrator does anything bad. Uh, invaders are the ones that uh, are problematic. This infiltrator may try to web or scram me. I don't know. I'm going to slow down just to see what it does. Maybe we can see. Uh, but when you see frigates, uh, the danger is that they will web you. And as you remember, if you go slow, you will start taking more damage. So if they catch up to you, get close to you within web range and they web you, uh, that could end up being annoying because you'll suddenly start taking a lot of damage. If you're paying attention and not AFK, then you can just kill them uh, by manually targeting them. But if you're AFK, you may end up coming back to a pod. So let's see, this one is getting close to me. Let's see what it does. They normally have a fairly short range. There you go, it's webbed me. So yeah, infiltrators and invaders are the bad ones. I'm not sure what the arrogator does. It may be an ECM frigate, uh, but I don't remember it as being annoying.
Oh hello, my drones are coming to save me. That's unusual. Normally they just go after the big ships. Anyway, let's put the prop mod back on and keep going. This is normally done either semi or fully AFK because it's been 23 minutes since I started this recording and it's rather boring, you know, just shooting red crosses here, nothing much to do. I mean, okay, if I'm taking massive damage or something, perhaps I should manually target something, but this is not really the case once you have trained up the skills, so nothing for you to do, just tab out, keep an eye on intel, and come back when the site is done. Let's uh, see if anything else interesting happens here. Here we have a new wave that spawned. No really dangerous ships in there, but one technique you can use if you are in if you are having shield trouble is to always kill the smaller things, uh, or rather the medium-sized things, the 300 meter enemies at the start of every wave. Because while they don't do that much more damage than the big ships, they die much faster. So by killing all these cruisers, you can simply more quickly reduce the amount of incoming damage. I'm not going to bother right now, but basically you'll want to go from the smallest to largest if you have problems. Since the frigates are most dangerous because they web, um, well perhaps the modifiers are even more dangerous because they do a lot of damage, but then you can just clear the cruisers to reduce the damage even more. And the uh, battleships, they really don't do any damage at all. It doesn't matter how many battleships there are, you will survive just fine. Here's our friendly salvager guy. Um, he asked to, he asked my permission to take my Rex. I gave it to him, so. I guess he's eagerly come in while there are still rats in the site. Hmm. Might not be very healthy for him, but oh well. I hope he knows what he's doing. So far they appear to be aggressing me, so he's probably okay for now. Ah, check that out. Ah, okay, this one was just slow. I thought it was maybe targeting him instead. Anyway, I just realized I forgot to do something. When you plop down your MTU, you'll want to bookmark it because you might forget it. You will almost certainly forget it. I just stick it in OP1, whatever. And this just means you can easily warp back to it later uh, because you will not be able to pick it up again with your VNI because your VNI is a very small cargo hold. And not only do you need to pick up your mobile tractor unit, you also want to pick up all the loot that is in it. And it's just not going to fit here. So what people do is they go around ratting in multiple anomalies, uh, as many as you can fit your mobile tractor units, which for a VNI is four. You do your four anomalies, drop a mobile tractor in each one, and then come back with an industrial ship with a large cargo bay to just pick them all up and together with the loot and then just repeat until you get fed up with it. The mobile tractor unit act, collects a bit of loot, but it's not that much, uh, maybe maybe around 5 million per anomaly. Uh, it just adds up over time, but it's not uh, that big a haul besides the main ISK income, um, which is after all the main reason one does this. So you see, these are all the ratting ticks that they get. These payments are made every 20 minutes. So you can see 10 million, 16 million, 15, 7, 15, it kind of varies, goes up, up and down. This is perhaps a bit low. Uh, if you have good skills, you can get it even higher. But, well, it's good enough. 
and it depends on what anomalies you run. The ones most on this list were Havens. Havens pay less than Forsaken Hubs, but they have other advantages that are uh, not currently relevant. This one was from the Forsaken Hub, you can already see it's 15, higher than most of these below. And this is the end game, this is what you, pee, what you rat for, to get this nice ticks of money into your wallet. Ooh, the salvager guy is back. He still likes salvaging with the rats in system. You see they're yellow boxing me? This means they're shooting someone else, not me. If it's red they're shooting me, but right now I guess they're shooting Mr. Salvager. Oh well, these rats will die soon and it's probably the last wave. Yep, there you go. No more rats. So I'll just shift and R to recall my drones. Control space to stop my stop my ship. Afterburner off. Just wait for my drones to come back to me. And then I could go to the next anomaly. But I'm not going to. I'm going to dock up and end this video. But wait, there's more. Perhaps you want to see what's different if you wrapped in an Ishtar. I will give you a quick sneak preview into it. So this is a standard platinum Ishtar. The fit is on the forums, very similar, same uh, basic principle, extreme tank and a bit of DPS. Works just like a grown-up version of the VNI, except it has a bit better resists, and it's also capable of tanking other players. As you see, not only are the two main Gurista resists high, but also the um, explosive and EM are fairly respectable and hey what's this I have three active tank modules here if you turn these on the resist go even higher and this will this is designed to tank four interceptors so let's take a look at what happens if we warp to a site let's do haven havens are let's do a cloud haven this first one is a cloud haven. There are two types of havens, one with a cloud, which is difficult, and the other with a asteroid around the gate, which is very easy. Uh, if you get uh, very proficient with your VNI, you may want to try those um, gate havens out, because they can also be done in a VNI, and in certain situations they are more profitable, because they escalate to the maze. What that means, I will explain in a minute. Oh, damn, someone's already in here. Fine, let's just skip this. Take the next one. Gotta warp out here fast, because there are these uh, frigates that can also scram you, and it's annoying if you are stuck in someone else's uh, site. So we just warp off fast if you uh, end up in someone else's site, otherwise, you'll be making things weird, after all you don't rat to play with other people, that would be strange. Alright, this is a clean anomaly, nobody else here. So in an Ishtar, the basic principle is the same, but just for fun, what you can do is uh, I didn't turn this on just for effect, but you should always turn on all these modules when you undock. Just turn this on, drop drones, and with an Ishtar you can just sit here. The Ishtar will absolutely tank anything these rats can do to you. I mean, every cycle of this third module, this shield booster, will pretty much fully repair your shield. And that's it. Doesn't matter what's on field, doesn't matter if they web you, I mean you can just stand still and nothing will happen. I could just drop an MTU here, but I forgot to pick any from station, so oops, I cannot. So that's the difference between an Ishtar and a VNI. An Ishtar is much stronger, not only against rats, but also against other players. It will tank some interceptors. Of course, if a wormhole gang drops take three cruisers on you, you will still die. 
And finally, uh, I will show you what you need to do to get good damage output. There are some critical skills that you need in order to apply damage to the rats. Heavy drone operation is the first one. Uh, give, gives you 5% bonus for every level. You will also want to get this to level 5 to get access to WASP 2s because with WASP 2s the drone specialization skill raises damage output even higher. So if you get it to level 4 that's an extra 8%. Right now this is just going to waste. I have it trained to level 3 because I was stupid but it's not actually doing anything because it only affects the WASP 2s, not the Navy WASPs that I'm using. You will also want drone interfacing. This is another big boost to drone uh, damage output. And the final drone damage skill is not actually in the drone section, it's in Spaceship Command. Because Galente Cruiser also affects your drone damage output. Uh, because if you look at the Ishtar and also the VNI's uh, ship information, you will see Galente Cruiser bonuses, blah blah blah, heavy drone, hit points and damage, 10% per level. So at level 5 that's an extra 50%. So these are the main damage output skills. There are also some other useful skills under drones, like uh, navigation, sharpshooting, whatever, but they're not that important. You, you will want to have them uh, after you have trained the main skills, but uh, yeah, they're not that critical. Alright, thanks for watching. I'm gonna go and talk up now.